All right, it's Wes. Welcome to this video. Today, uh, you're invited to join me as I head out for some street photography with a couple of cameras. And <laughs> shooting with two cameras. Yeah, it was a challenge. And my goal is to measure, assess, understand, comprehend, and analyze which camera worked better for street photography. Uh, the Fuji, which is a classic street photography camera. It's known for that. Yeah. Or the Canon EOS R5. Uh, I threw on a blazer because I thought maybe if uh, I dressed up, you would subscribe. <laughs> All right, you're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. Morning. Good morning, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good, good. Hey, I'm just doing two tests uh, comparing cameras. Do you mind if I get a shot of you? Sure. Oh, nice. With a mask or with other masks? Uh, uh, without is probably better. And, uh, Oh yeah, I already know which camera's better. <laughs> three, two, one. It does not want to find your eye. There we go, three, two, one. All right, thanks. <laughs> now on the surface, we can, you know, draw a couple of facts out into the open. The R5 is clearly bigger than the X-E4 and more than that, the, uh, the 28 to 70 RF lens is clearly bigger <laughs> than the 28 millimeter uh, X mount lens from Fuji. Megapixels are roughly double the size uh, on the R5. We're at 45 versus 26 uh, for the, the XC4. Uh, the sensor size is different. APS-C here, full frame here. So these are the known things. So uh, let's dive into the unknown. The unknown. That's what we're here to find out. You mind if I get a picture of you? I'm testing my cameras out here. That's cool. Looks like a good morning uh, for you. Chilling and having a having some coffee. Is that from the coffee shop here? Yeah. Oh, they're not. Mm -hmm. Are they open? No, no. Oh. It's closed right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you too. generally wouldn't put these cameras in the same category, but if you shoot street photography, you might take either out, and I did. And when I did, I started to wonder how each would shine and would there be any surprises or disappointments when they went head to head on the same street photography outing in the same conditions with a similar focal length on the same subject. So I'm here to share the findings with you. Um, one thing I found is I usually use the test screen when shooting with the R5 during a photo shoot. Um, I rely on the, and you'll see this in the video, you'll, I rely on the LCD for composition, um, but I'm usually adjusting my exposure on the back uh, screen, uh, the touch screen. But I found in this uh, street photography outing, while I used the LCD for composition, I relied on the top dial for my most frequent uh, adjustment, which was shutter speed. And so instead of tapping on the screen to make that adjustment, I was just rolling the shutter, uh, shutter speed. I was, I was just adjusting the shutter speed with the top dial. So I, that led me to another discovery. Ergonomically, the R5 allowed me uh, to much, much, much more easily adjust the shutter speed with one hand. Uh, now, uh, this was a two camera shoot and I was always holding a camera. I was always holding a camera in each hand during the whole shoot, so the whole time it was mandatory to shoot one-handed. And so you'll notice right here, I can't really get to the shutter speed uh, dial with one hand on the Fuji versus I can on the, on the Canon. It was actually easier to shoot on the Canon. Now this led to a specific outcome. I actually found in reviewing the images in Lightroom, I had more shots in a row on the Fuji X-E4 where I left the shutter speed the same as the image before because it was harder to adjust the shutter speed. And so I left it alone, which meant that more of my exposures were off sometimes because I hadn't adjusted the shutter speed when I needed to. Versus the Canon, it was a simple flick of the finger and I could dial in that exposure. Now you can call that lazy. Uh, I just call it a discovery. <laughs> uh, so the other thing is I wasn't able to nudge the focus point on the joystick with the uh, R5. So you should be able to move this and move the uh, the uh, 
the focus point. Uh, I have the XE4 has a joystick right here, and I was able to nudge that with my thumb and make that adjustment and move the focal point around the the, uh, the LCD to move the focus point uh, for the the image. But on the R5, that's a setting that I'm not exactly sure where it is, and so if you know, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, so. Obviously, the things that um, I uh, nice. right, concluded, this was all about a 30-minute uh, street photography session. This I could shoot all day with. Obviously, this was going to take its toll. Um, obviously, I could do more vertical shots here, and actually, I, I took some on both. Uh, but it's, it's easier to get that focal point uh, when you have the, the articulating screen. Um, but the, I wasn't hampered by the ability to look at the screen uh, on the body and not flip it out on the XC4. So let's see what happens here when we shoot the moon. 35 mil. And 35 mil as well. 640. So in other terms, things that I learned, I think the, the ergonomics um, surprised me on the, on the R5, uh, the, the light weight, actually you'll see my shots are more sure in some of the the footage i, I just am able to click these off and uh, i think i shot more overall because i i would take a couple of shots here versus holding this up was heavier so i was trying to get that shot and move on um, so what we're going to do is just enjoy walking around downtown fullerton we're going to see some of these moments that uh, happened and compare it, uh, side by side same moment same light um, similar focal length which camera um, we're actually going to zoom in and take a look at some of these this footage and we'll see which camera uh, really shined really shone and uh and we'll do a little pixel peeping that's that's true we're going to do some pixel peeping Now, also, I put a poll up on Instagram. So we have uh, G, uh, G Kraus, G Kraus. I just blanked on your first name. George, Glenn, Greg, I'm not sure. I feel embarrassed. Kraus photo, G Kraus photo. He said for the run and gun, he would go with Fuji. Uh, then we have Evan, uh, EV Worldwide. He said Fuji, Pancake Lens, go with that small size. Um, Art Jimenez said Canon would be more flexible, but he'd probably choose Fuji. And then uh, Neto Velasco says Fuji XE4. So it uh, looks like four to one on the Fuji street photography versus the Canon street photography. I think the next thing I'm, I'm gonna do is put a 35 mil, the little RF lens on here and go out and do it the same and see what I think with that weight. Uh, so let's jump over to YouTube, see what people said on the poll I put it on put on the channel and all right so it looks like it's about ooh, ooh. so here's the quick poll on YouTube which would you choose for street photography only 60% chose the Canon and 40% chose the Fuji so Instagram favors the Fuji um, like four to zero or 100% um, of the votes here 
60% of the votes on uh, YouTube are for the Canon for street photography. All right, thank you for joining me. If you got anything out of this video, please leave, it, uh, leave me a like, give me a like, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, leave me a comment. I would love to know where in the world you're watching this video from, whether you're a Fuji shooter or a Canon shooter. These are my two cameras. I was gonna say loves, but I love the Fuji. I like the Canon. This is my workhorse for work, and this is my uh, play camera for um, personal photos. Uh, so yeah, they're different. They serve different purposes. I'm lucky I'm blessed to have both of them. Uh, and in this shootout, and in this shootout, what, what do I say about this, these two cameras? If I had to go shoot street photography, I would take this. I would take this. Thanks for joining me and please uh, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.